If you follow this channel, you know by now that I am a fan of Bang & Olufsen products, but more than just being a fan, I'm actually a longtime customer, going back about ooh, 20 years now. After reviewing one of their latest loudspeakers, the BO Lab 28, I started to wonder if it would be possible to make my older Bang & Olufsen speakers look and sound like the newer models. Here's how it went. While the BO Lab 28 will no doubt go down in history, at least to me, as one of the finest speakers BO has made to date, some of my favorite Bang & Olufsen products were manufactured during the 90s, or what I lovingly referred to as peak BO. In the 90s, Bang & Olufsen was everywhere in the US, with stores in most major high-end malls, giving, giving people access to high-end hi-fi sound in ways few brands have ever been able to replicate. It was during this time that I fell in love with the brand, lusting after products like the iconic Biolab 8000 and Penta loudspeakers. Simply put, if you were at all into hi-fi or home theater during this time, no one, and I mean no one, was making products that looked sounded or performed like B&O. My very first B&O purchase was a pair of secondhand Biolab 6000 towers. That purchase led to another and then to another and well, you get the idea. Over the years, the one B&O speaker that has remained in my collection has been the Biolab 4000, Bang & Olufsen's wildly popular two-way bookshelf speaker. And the 4000 is a class AB powered monitor that features a one inch soft dome tweeter mated to a four ish inch woofer, which is good for a reported frequency response of about 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. While the 4000s will work in a variety of setups, I find them best suited for small to medium rooms. Their maximum SPL rating is about 97 dB, which is loud, but when you approach that volume, high distortion sets in hard. But don't be too concerned, for most of us really listen above 80 dB or so. And while the 4000s can be used as main speakers, they absolutely excel as center speaker, surrounds, or in a desktop environment, where you're not likely going to be going for broke the same way that you might with, say, a pair of Klipsch Forte 4s. The 4000s were way ahead of their time when they were first manufactured back in the mid 90s. And for a 25 year old speaker, they sure don't look like it. That said, they don't look like current B&O products like the Biolab 28 either. While I toyed with the idea of having the 4000s aluminum refinished, possibly even vinyl wrapped in a new color, I ultimately stuck with the speaker's original black because, well, still look good. But the original grills, they needed some love. And while I could have run down to the local fabric store and maybe bought a new fabric in order to recover them, that wouldn't really give me the new B&O look I was after. So I reached out to prestige creators who make aftermarket wood grills for vintage B&O speakers that look virtually indistinguishable from the grills you're going to find on products like the Biolab 28. And the new wood grills look great and fit to the speakers magnetically as if they were spec from the factory. They're not what I would call cheap, at least not here in the States. A pair of wood grills from Prestige Creators is going to set you back about $500 US, but I personally, I think it's totally worth it. Once installed, my 20 plus year old BO Lab 4000s look as if they rolled off the factory line yesterday, looking completely at home next to the BO Lab 28s. Now, a used pair of 4000s will run you around 500 bucks for the pair, so even when you're factoring in the cost of the new grills, you may still be able to come in under $1,000. But there is more to the Bang & Olufsen experience than mere looks. Now, part of what I love about their modern products is their functionality, especially as it relates to app support and connectivity. Now, by vintage standards, B&O products have always been incredibly flexible with respect to their connection and setup options. The 4000s featured the ability to be connected to existing B&O hardware via the brand's proprietary PowerLink cable or to traditional hi-fi products using a line level or or RCA style connection. Admittedly, I have always relied on the latter, for I usually connected my vintage BioLab speakers to stereo preamps or AV processors rather than to other BO products like CD players and whatnot. Now, in order to add a vintage BO speaker to the brand's existing ecosystem, meaning full Bang & Olufsen app support and compatibility, one needs to purchase the Bang & Olufsen Core, which is a small hub or hockey puck looking device that effectively acts as the new brain for older B&O products. Now, because the core is new, it utilizes B&O's current input output ports, which look a lot like Ethernet ports, but they're not. 
To use these ports with vintage gear, you're going to need adapter cables. And the best place for vintage and adapted B&O cables is Sounds Heavenly. And they totally hooked me up with all of the original BioLink cables I needed for my system, as well as the adapter cable to connect my vintage 4000s to the new core. Now with everything connected to the core, I was now able to see and control my BioLab 4000s with the same Bang & Olufsen app we use to control our BioSound level and the BioLab 28s with one rather large caveat. One of the best things about the Bang & Olufsen app is the ability to tune new BO speakers to sound essentially however you want. Simply dragging your finger around the virtual dial will effectively change their sound to your liking. And I, I was really hoping for that level of customization on my 4000s via the core, but sadly it's just not there. Don't get me wrong, the core is still a great B&O accessory, especially when blending new products with old, but one of its best features for me is just sadly MIA. Now, I'm not sure if the missing EQ is unique to 90s era products or if newer products would fare a little bit better. If you know, please do let me know down in the comments below. What I could do with the core attached was connect my BioLab 4000s to my Sony TV and Apple TV using AirPlay, or I could stream directly to the speakers through the app on my phone. I could also pair my vintage speakers with other B&O products in my house for a whole home B&O distributed audio system. In this respect, the core brought my decades old BioLab 4000s into the present, but if I'm being honest, it didn't give me the customization and flexibility that I was ultimately after. So I ditched the core and went a different, I think, better route. Enter the Blue Sound node. Because most vintage Bang & Olufsen speakers from the 90s, the 4000s included, have line level inputs, and that makes connecting them to devices like the Node really easy. What's more, the Node allows for greater streaming capability, not to mention it adds HDMI connectivity and the ability to do proper bass management in the form of a dedicated subwoofer out with crossover filters being set inside the Blue OS app. Let us not forget that the Node costs nearly half as much as the Core. As cool as the Core is, the Node proved to be a far better hub for my old BioLab 4000s where I paired them with my new Klipsch subwoofer. This made a huge difference in their overall sound quality. When paired with a capable sub like our Klipsch SPL100, the sonic difference between my 20-year-old BioLab 4000s and the BioLab 28s in their narrow mode was actually pretty comparable. I'm not going to say the two are the same, but they are closer than I expected. While the BioSound 28 is still a superior speaker, for a total cost of less than $2,000 all in for my BioLab 4000 setup, I'm pretty happy with their performance, not to mention the $12,000 of savings. So unless you have an extensive B&O collection already, with most of your equipment being relatively new, I say ditch the core and go with something like the Blue Sound Node. So in the end, was I ultimately able to make my older BioLab 4000s look and sound like a pair of BioLab 28s? Well, yes and no. Yes, in that the new wood grills make my aging 4000s look current. And no, they didn't exactly outperform the 28s sonically. That said, I was not prepared for how close I did get. Minus the ultimate flexibility and tuning that the 28s give you, using the Blue Sound node and a third-party subwoofer, the 4000s put up quite a sonic fight, even being comparable to the 28s in their narrow mode with respect to clarity and transparency. If anything, my old 4000s sounded a little less digital and more warm in comparison. Now, which sound signature is ultimately best is going to be up to you, but for me, this entire experiment was an eye-opening one, one that I could see myself repeating with other vintage B&O products in the future. So that is how I updated a pair of vintage BioLab 4000s. And before we sign off, let's see if Christy has anything to add to this experiment. <laughs> this was kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Don't pretend it wasn't. We've been working on this for probably four to six months oh at least yeah. at least i mean look i i i think that you were you were successful in your your experiment uh but would i choose to do it again no yeah. no no um i mean i i i love the idea of like the concept of taking something old and modernizing it is really cool but 
there is something to be be said for just being able to go and buy the new thing, yeah. get it in your house and it works and like and you're done. You can kind of move on with your life. Mm-hmm. I mean, what people don't know is how we had to buy more than one pair of the speakers because one the first pair we bought one of yes. the speakers yeah, fixed, one of the stopped speakers working. Did fail. Yeah. Um the stands which yes. are really cool, but you should know they are. Aren't they? Are they? Are they vintage or something? Yes, those stands were the stands that you're seeing in the B-roll of this video are purpose built for the four thousands. And I don't know if maybe Bang and Olufsen back in the '90s didn't manufacture a lot, or if people were buying the speakers and not using the stands, choosing to wall mount them or table mount them. The stands are insanely hard to get your hands on. And I think they were actually more expensive. They were the than... most expensive thing in this experiment. So when you add the cost of the stands yeah. and everything else, it could start to border on: is this worth it? Territory. Well, I'm I gonna... mean, but if you're really into the if yeah. you're really into the brand and and you like to tinker, then th- I'm sure the the answer to that question will for you would be absolutely. Well, I mean, look, had I not wanted to do this experiment out in our main room, I wouldn't have had to hunt the stands down because the 4000s have been my desktop speakers for, you know, pretty much all of 2021. It was only when I started to look at them and go, I wonder if we can get close to the 28. Did they suddenly stop being what they've always been and needed to be something else? And in that respect, yes, one of the hardest things to source were the stands. Now, if you live across the pond, if you're over in Europe, your experience may differ dramatically from mine. Because, oh, yeah, because b is basically free over there. Yeah, you guys are just <laughs> swimming in this stuff. But here in the States on good old eBay or Facebook Marketplace, it is slim pickings. Um, and one of the, the things, if you're, if you're thinking about doing this, if you're like, oh, well, you know what, Andrew, that looks really good. And that kind of a system for less than $2,000 appeals to me. Uh, by all means, go for it. Go for it. But understand, you're buying something secondhand. You're buying something out of warranty. There is a lot of trial and error. You may have to rely on, say, the larger B&O community online to help you out. But one of the key things that I will uh, say about buying vintage B&O speakers, make sure if you can't see them in person prior to buying them, make sure there are very detailed photos. And the number one thing, at least for me, to look for is, yes, they power on. But secondly, uh, there's no foam rot around the drivers. You will find a ton of B&O speakers for cheap on eBay. But when you look at the actual drivers themselves, they are all rotted out. If you have experience refoaming drivers, knock yourself out, go to town. But if you're like me and you're like, mm, I can do some DIY, but I don't want to do all the DIY, make sure you buy a pair or pay a little bit more to ensure that you get a pair of 4,000, 6,000, 8,000 without any age related rot. If you do that, these speakers will last should, I'm not, I don't want to say it will last in a lifetime because one of you is going to be like, I bought one and it died in six months. Um, <laughs> which should, actually happened to us. Which happened, well, okay. I had been rocking a pair on my desk, like I said, every single day for a while. And then one of the amplifiers in that just kind of started to slowly fade away. And I could have just sent that one in for service, but it turns out that it was actually cheaper to just go on eBay, find another pair and buy it, then repair it. So speaks to the cost effectiveness. I still have the broken one, by the way. I still have the broken one. I still plan on fixing it because it's still a good speaker and maybe I'll use it as a center channel. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's just one of the things to look out for. But anyway, they, it was it was a fun experiment it and was. I, they do sound really good. So if you can't afford the brand new Bang and all of sins, then this could give you give you a, a good way to experiment. One of the things I wanted to ask you though was, mm-hmm. is there something current from BNO that is similar to the bookshelf speaker? They discontinued it. There was a speaker that the that replaced the four thousand. Um, it, it it was the oh no, the BNO fam is going to come for me. Uh, BLAB 17, BO Sound 17, um, which is the newer WISA Wi Fi enabled version, if you will, of the 4000s. But that was recently discontinued. And as of right now, 
There is nothing that is like a direct a descendant of the 4,000. Now, Bang & Olufsen, and I've even heard some people in the Bang & Olufsen community, shout out to you guys, um, say that uh, the Biosound level, which we have, we've reviewed on this channel, and some of their new Bluetooth speakers are kind of what they're going for as a replacement for the 4000s because you can pair two of them together for stereo imaging and whatnot. And to that, and to that degree, um, I think I would actually agree. I think the Biosound level is probably the closest facsimile to the old 4000s. Um, it is infinitely more flexible. It doesn't require the core and things like that. So if you're looking for something with the same amount of maybe flexibility with more of that future connectivity options and wireless stuff built in, full app support. Um, yeah, a pair of levels probably get the job done. Yeah, yeah, the, the core not working like you wanted it to was the biggest yeah. disappointment. That was the biggest disappointment. disappointment. Yeah. But honestly, like, did you really think that they were gonna give you that? I did, I legitimately <laughs> did. Um, I think, I think that's wishful thinking, because then why would people need to buy the new stuff? Yeah, but I also think that by adding that functionality in, um, you are giving your existing customer base more longevity. <laughs> and you can sit there and laugh and be like, well, at some point, we're going to want them to re-up. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe that's true, but I don't know. I just... It's literally the only thing missing is the the customization of the EQ. You still get tone controls, but you don't get that that DSP. And uh, I really did for a thousand bucks. I expected it to be in there. Yeah, I really did. Um, but node to the rescue, <laughs> man, that node is something else. I that that's a that's a decent product. We may have to give that a full review. Who knows? Yeah. All right. So that is now uh, my Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> with with my vintage Bang & Olufsen Biolab 4000s. What did you guys think? Cool experiment? Wasted my time? <laughs> <laughs> Spent way too much money? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, I have a question of the day for you. And that is, what older B&O product would you revive in 2022? Let me know. I am curious. Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here, and we thank you very much for doing that. Um, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. Final video, I think, of 2021. Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, so remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you in the new year. Happy New Year. Bye.